our second story, I'm I'm gonna read part of this uh, too. So, but our second story, uh, I was was sent to me by my good friend Mark Viola, a very funny comedian named Mark Viola. But he sent me this link, and I for for like half a second, I didn't believe that this story was true. Uh, but apparently, it is because it's like in the Pe- Pennsylvania state le- state legislator website. Um, and I got to look this woman's name up. But uh, we are um, at tomorrow, actually, uh, March 30th, uh, Pennsylvania State Representative Stephanie Borowitz, who I'm not particularly familiar with, uh, wants March 30th, 2020 to be recognized as a state day of humiliation, fasting and prayer. Everybody take a minute. Take a minute to absorb all of that, uh, I, uh, all of what I said. Uh, this is this is part of our reality that we're living in. This is not a story from an alternate timeline uh, where you know Ted Cruz did become president and figured out how to make the Bible into uh, into law. That's not what we're living in. This is uh, this is just reality. There that that what a state legislative legislator. Uh, decided to say that we need a day of uh, humiliation. <laughs> uh, here's why she says it's it's dealing with the with with COVID um, is that this is punishment inflicted upon us for our presumptions uh, for our presumptuous sins for our presumptuous sins. Let me read that one more time. Punishment inflicted upon us for our presumptuous sins. Now I doubt very much uh, that what she is referring to is the sins of uh, of capitalism is is the sins of of an unfettered capitalistic system uh, that that literally sucks the world dry uh, by, uh, you know, extinguishing its resources and turning its natural resources into uh, points of profit uh, and uh, and does not help uh, the the people within it that uh, the capitalistic system itself depends on to stay alive and is turned into a a, a cannibalistic force of uh, a genuine evil. Uh, I doubt that's what she means. I doubt that's what she means, right? I feel like a, I feel like a lot of this has to do with uh, with with probably masturbation. Uh, probably that would be that would be that would be my guess around it, but. Uh, here, here's the, here's the, uh, here's the actual thing. Uh, I want to read. I want to read as much of this as I possibly can because without just laughing, uh, I'll, pretty much all of this stuff starts with whereas, which I already kind of think is funny uh, because you could have just written it uh, like just like a, but fine. Uh, whereas on March 30th, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed April 30th, 1863, as a national day of humiliation, fasting, and prayer. And whereas since March 11th, 2020, the United States has been in a time of crisis. And whereas during the pandemic of 2020, the ensuing uncertainty and anxiety of this time, Pennsylvanians may have may be comforted by turning to a day of humiliation, fasting, and prayer, as well as wise words of our great President Abraham Lincoln. And whereas the House of Representatives devoutly recognizes the supreme authority and just government of Almighty God in all of the affairs of men and nations. First of all, I will say that uh, this National Day of Humiliation and Fasting uh, and prayer or whatever that Abraham Lincoln pro- proclaimed uh, was after the Emancipation Proclamation. And this is post-Emancipation Proclamation. Um, so I think really what happened is that Lincoln got a little cocky. You know, he was like, boy, that speech really killed. That that speech nailed it. Well, I feel like a lot of people are going to be talking about this for a really long time. You know, I feel pretty good about it. What else can I do? Uh, maybe I'll tell people that they need to be humiliated about themselves over this slavery thing. And, uh, and that'll probably, uh, eradicate slavery. I uh, probably on a global level, uh, by telling people that they need to feel super amounts of shame at themselves and punish themselves, you know, for these presumptuous sins and, uh, what we, you know, and I feel like this might've backfired on them because what if, uh, John Wilkes Booth was, uh, was humiliated. And uh, and that's really why he did it. We don't know. You know, that could be it. Um, also, 
the the House of Representatives devoutly recognizes the supreme authority and just government of Almighty God. Isn't that like just massively in violation of separation of church and state? Like that, that like it's not the government of Almighty God. It's the government of the people by the people. I haven't even been a citizen for that long, and I fucking know that. This person is a state representative. Holy shit. Just based on her writing that alone, she should be fucking fired, right? She should be, like, removed from office. <laughs> they should, like, send her away. And then they should point at her and be like, shame. Shame for not understanding basic eighth grade civics. Shame. <laughs> and see how she fucking likes that shit. <laughs> Okay, so we read on, we read on. Uh, Whereas it is the duty of nations as well as of men to their own dependence upon the overruling power of God to confess their sins and transgressions in humble sorrow. And whereas we assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history that those nations are only blessed whose God is the Lord. And whereas in so much as what his divine law, nations like individuals are subject to punishments and chastisement in this world. Holy shit, there's a lot there. There's a lot there. Okay, there's a lot there. Uh, Oh boy. Oh boy, folks. Um, We got to confess our sins and transgressions. According to the Holy Scriptures, what if I don't? Uh, what if I don't think that the Holy Scriptures are the thing that I uh, believe in? What if? What if I'm a pagan? What if I'm a Muslim? You know, we have they have different Holy Scriptures. What if you're Jewish? You know, I mean, technically, that's all the Abrahamic gods. So, I mean, that's a lot to go off of, right? So, do you do you go? by confession of sins from Old Testament, New Testament, and Quran. A lot of contradictions just within that alone, you know? I grew up in a Hindu household. We got we got different ways to, to deal with... Our holy scriptures are different. And, uh, you know, our, our God is uh, multiple. We have a lot of gods. Some people worship the earth. Pagans. What are you going to do about that? You know? I feel like the earth uh, is is like, hey, uh, if there's too many of you, I'm going to, you know, have to do something about it. Uh, either tell you guys to stop fucking for like a little bit or just, you know, you guys did invent condoms. Maybe wear those like a lot more, like a lot more, uh, you know, like what if what if that's one of the ways that the earth decides to evolve us is natural condoms? I don't know. You know, is that would that be considered punishment? According to Stephanie Borowitz, although that is acknowledging evolution and that's a problem, uh, and there there's nothing about that, right? Uh, she also says the nations like individuals are subject to punishment and chastisement in this world. Oh my goodness! Great. So now we have divine intervention meeting the prison industrial complex. That's the fucking problem. <laughs> this didn't happen because fucking somebody, you know, some fucking 14 year old jacked off to some weird porn that he had the dad experienced before. This happened because there's too many humans and we have a, 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 a virus that knows how to spread from other animals to humans to other humans. And it spreads really fast. Because, uh, because you know, that's just we've we've created a hyper sterilized world. So now it's just like every time something new comes up, we're like, holy fuck, we gotta shut it all down, and we freak out, and we don't understand how to deal with fear. And this isn't helping. This isn't fucking helping. Ugh. And right as I brought up fear, here's the next part. Uh, whereas in so much as we know that his divine law... Okay, that's the part I just read, sorry. Uh, where, whereas may we just justly fear that the off, awful calamity of the pandemic, which now desolates his com- this commonwealth, may be but a punishment inflicted upon us for our pre- presumptuous sins to the need needful end of our national reformation as a whole people? 
question mark? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't think we need to be afraid that it's going to be like the end of all of us. I, I, I think we need to very much be concerned that there needs to be some major national reform. I think that's correct. Uh, but is this, I don't know if this is as apocalyptic as what people are saying it is. Um, so let's continue. Uh, whereas we have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven, and we have preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. What the fuck? No, we haven't. We haven't. We haven't had the choicest bounty. Is is working two fucking jobs and not being able to make end meet ends meet? That's choices. Choices bounties of heaven. You know, is 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 fucking the seven wars that the last four presidencies have started. That's not showing peace and prosperity. We have like the largest economic divide in this country over 30 years of politics, like, and religiosity. You know, you, you have, you have assholes like Joel Olstein who won't open up their churches when there is a hurricane. How about that? How, what, what are you, what are you doing for that? <laughs> Shouldn't he feel humiliated for that? For being a huckster? Whereas we have grown in numbers, wealth, and power, no, as no other nation has ever grown. That's true. Uh, whereas, but we have forgotten God, and we have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. No, no, they didn't. Dude, there, there have been multiple wars in the name of God. And in the Old Testament, he just fucking destroyed a bunch of shit all the time. Like all of these religions do. All of these religions just have a God that's like, oh, I don't... I don't like what's happening. So I will uh, fire and brimstone, fire and brimstone. <laughs> this, this whole fucking thing is just filled with so many contradiction. Uh, man, the mental gymnastic ones has to do to, to write something like this is amazing. Uh, whereas we have vainly imagined the deceitful, deceitfulness in all our hearts that these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and a virtue of our own. Whereas intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of, of redeeming and persevering grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. Do you feel like this is all just kind of encouraging God to be a helicopter parent? Like sometimes you just got to let your kids go and figure shit out on, the, on, their, on, on their own. You know, and, and, and the, all of this is just like, God, can you just help us? I know we're we're 10,000 years old, but, but, but maybe you can, you can kind of pat us on the butt. Here we go. We'll, we'll wrap this up because it's going to switch the wording on it. Whereas it behooves us then to humble ourselves before the offended power to confess our national sins and pray for clemency and forgiveness. Therefore be it uh, kind of sounds like God's a little bit of a snowflake. Uh, resolved that ha the House of Representatives designate March 30th, 2020 as a state day of humiliation, fasting, and prayer in Pennsylvania, and be it further resolved that the House of Representatives requests all Pennsylvanians to abstain on that day from their ordinary secular pursuits to unite at their respective homes in keeping the day holy to the Lord and devoted to the humble discharge of religious, religious duties proper to that solemn occasion and be it further, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to read the last paragraph because I think you guys get it. I think you guys get it. Um, when has shame ever worked? Do you guys, do you guys know at, at, at any point has shaming somebody ever fucking worked? Like, has it, has it ever led to anything positive? Because I don't really know that it has. Like, when you shame somebody, you isolate them. Like, you make them, you make them go inside, you make them feel bad about it, and usually, like, that just leads to further negative behaviors. So I have never seen shame actually be used as a, as a positive course for change or progress. So why are we saying that this is going to work now, right? Like, why are we going to say that, oh, by atoning and being humiliated in ourselves for the way that we live our, no, that's not what fucking causes this virus. Like, uh, 
and, and that's not what's going to get us out of it either. You know what? You know what caused us to be in the situation that we're in? Poor planning and having no fucking plan at all. Hubris is what caused us to be in this thing. Like it doesn't fucking help anybody. It just makes things so much worse. This is so th- not only <laughs> so not only is this a violation of separation of church and state, uh, and and it shows that a state representative of of my state, Pennsylvania does not know basic eighth grade motherfucking civics by calling this a the government of the almighty God. Um, but she also just doesn't know basic psychology of like, you don't shame and humiliate somebody you, that turns them in, inward and either leads to, to worse situations like self-harm or outward violence towards, towards being extra extradited. That's not the right word. Um, by being, you know, pushed out of a community, by being pushed out of a society, so now they act outward from it. It's there's never a fucking, never um, has has been proven to be a positive effect of of shame. It's like like that's that that was the whole basis of call out culture, and every single time that happens, all these people just end up doubling down on their shitty behaviors anyway. Like this doesn't fucking work. Oh man. All right, let's look at some comments. Um, Brenda, hi, Brenda. Uh, I've seen memes about how Satan is doing this to destroy us and God, and God is doing this to bring us together. So they tag teamed us. Right, yeah. Which one is it? Is Satan and God working together? <laughs> They're just like boys in this, you know? Like after a couple thousand years, God's like, hey, bro, I might have kicked you out prematurely. You won't fuck with these primates for a little while. <laughs> you want to hang out and fuck with these primates for a bit? Jay. Oh, sweet Jay. Humiliation. I'm sitting at my desk without pants, half drunk, bruised, brushing sp- <laughs> spilled chili off my search. I don't see how much farther I can be humiliated. Look, that's just that's just a standard day for me. If I'm If I am not spilling something on my clothing, then I don't think I've had a good day, you know? That just means that you have a you have a heightened level of appreciation for what you're eating. That's that's this heightened level of a, appreciation, um, and it, I don't. I say you know to to save on water, um, and like laundry costs and stuff. Everybody should be eating naked all the time. That's what I say. That's just logical. That's just better for the environment. You know, that's just what we need to do. Uh, Brenda. A recent experience of humiliation is one of the risk factors for suicide. Not sure we, we should be dishing it out. Yeah, exactly. It 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 make like feeling terrible about yourself is a per like you can make a distinction that X behavior is not good and why you shouldn't do it. But um, you know, it, like like you said, it's a, it's a risk factor for suicide. So yeah, uh, I I think you can make you can make that distinction behavior bad person you'll be fine right like you can still be a good person because you can come out of it you can redeem yourself uh mark viola to be fair uh every day one lives in pittsburgh is a day of humiliation fuck you mark (laughs) (laughs) i am i am by no means a yinzer and i am not somebody that uh I'm super like I have like a lot of civic pride or anything, but I do like Pittsburgh. There's always cool shit to to do here, you know. Like I started comedy here. I met some fucking cool ass people here. Uh, I've recorded several stand up comedy albums here. There's st- there's fun stuff to do in Pittsburgh. It's just it. Honestly, this feels like when I went to a very liberal arts Catholic college uh, where I pissed off a lot of nuns. Go figure. Suppress, press, and uh, <laughs> and like. Uh, I just like, you always had to find something to do. Like you had to make your own fun. And sometimes I feel like that's what Pittsburgh is. Like if you look for it, there's a ton of cool shit going on in the city. There are tons of amazing venues like burning bridges ha- at slash ham bones, uh, Thunderbird cafe. Uh, you, have, you have like, even if you don't want to go drinking, like the Lawrenceville's popping off, Millvale's popping off. This place is amazing. So fuck you, Mark. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Fine, I won't take you to spec the next time you're in town, you son of a bitch. <laughs> hey, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please like and share. And make sure that you are subscribed to 
uh, get alerts whenever I'm dropping new videos. I'm putting out videos uh, pretty much every single day uh, during the the old the old pandemic situation that that we're all that we're all in together. Uh, so make sure that you guys are, um, you know, like, share, subscribe, make sure that you guys are getting notifications, um, and, uh, and, and keep up to date with all this stuff. Um, uh, what else did I, I don't have any live stand-up comedy dates to let you guys know about. I normally would, but right now, uh, they are all on hiatus. So, um, the best way to, to help is with the with the sharing and making sure that you're subscribed and stuff. But uh, if you have the means to and you can donate, uh, you can donate over at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can make a one-time donation or you can become a sustaining member, uh, whatever you are able to do. But it is, it is absolutely uh, not mandatory. It is a uh, extra sense of appreciation uh, for all the content that will be coming out. All of my content will be available uh, for free for you guys to view and enjoy. Uh, make sure you guys are taking care of each other. Make sure you're being good to each other. And uh, till the next one, we'll see you on the road. Thanks, guys.